starting with the encephalocraniocutaneous lipomatosis cases. Left is the clinical photograph of a scalp and it shows the typical appearance of the nevus silolipares, a well circumscribed area of scalp alopecia. The nevus overlies a lipoma and is the hallmark of the encephalocraniocutaneous lipomatosis. Right is the axial non enhanced CT scan in a two year old child with cranio and cephalocranio cutaneous lipomatosis, and it shows the focal lipomas in both cerebellopontine angle cisterns and the cisterna magna. Left is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI in the same patient, which was uh, uh, obtained three years later, and it shows a very large suboccipital lipoma. The foramen magnum lipoma has massively increased in size and it now occupies most of the posterior fossa. The foramen magnum lipoma now extends inferiorly into the upper cervical spine. Right is the axial T1 weighted MRI in the same patient and it shows how much the posterior fossa lipoma has increased in size compared to the baseline non-enhanced CT scan. The cerebellopontine angle lipomas extend into the mechal caves. So left is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and it shows an ipsilateral scalp and orbital lipoma. The globe is bouphthalmic with a scleral lipodermoid. Right is the axial T2 weighted MRI and it shows marked left ventricular megaly with herniation of the ventricle through the choroidal fissure and hemispheric volume loss. The herniated ventricle is displacing the posterior aspect of the cerebral hemisphere anteriorly, thereby compressing and distorting the hemispheric parenchyma. Left is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and it shows ipsilateral, orbital and middle cranial fossa lipomas. The cerebral cortex is distorted by the enlarged lateral ventricle. Also note the intracranial cyst. Right is the axial T1 weighted MRI and it shows an intracranial lipoma in the interhemispheric fissure and an extracranial lipoma in subcutaneous fat. There is no hemispheric atrophy or ventricular megaly. The patient is clinically normal and the findings may represent a form thrust of encephalocraniocutaneous lipomatosis. Left is the axial non-enhanced CT scan and it shows a middle cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa arachinoid cyst in a patient with encephalocraniocutaneous lipomatosis. Note the expansion of the left middle cranial fossa by the cyst. This cyst is ipsilateral to the hemispheric atrophy and the scalp lipoma. Scalp lipoma is sometimes poorly seen by imaging. Right is the sagittal T1 weighted MRI and it shows large subcutaneous lipomas in the upper neck and the occipital area of the scalp. Note the small lipoma immediately behind the cerebellar vagus. Left is the axial graphic and it shows the thickened and uh, so now we are starting with the uh, cases of Lermite Duclos disease. These are all the imaging cases of uh, Lermite Duclos disease. So starting with these images, the left is the axial graphic and it shows the thickened and irregular cerebellar folia in the right cerebellar hemisphere. This results in the enlargement of the hemisphere and mass effect upon the brainstem that is quite typical of Lermite Duclos disease. Axial T2 weighted right is the axial T2 weighted MRI in a 76 year old man with non specific headaches and it shows a hyper intense right uh, hemispheric mass. The widened gyriform folia give this mass a distinctive sprited appearance. Several dot like flow voids are present in between the enlarged folia. On the left is the axial T1 contrast enhanced uh, fat suppressed MRI in the same patient and it shows the thickened folia do not enhance but the prominent flow voids uh, which are seen on the T2 weighted MRI are showing strong uniform enhancement suggesting that they are vascular structures. On the right that's the coronal T1 contrast enhanced scan in the same case and it shows the enhancing vessels nicely. These findings were pathognomonic of Lermite Duclos disease, so the mass was not biopsied. So, left is the axial T1 weighted MRI in a 57 year old woman with headaches, and it shows a mildly hypo intense mass in the right cerebellar hemisphere and warmness. Right is the T2 weighted MRI in the same patient, and it shows that the mass is hyper intense and it has a striated gyriform appearance. Left is the axial flare scan in the same patient, and it shows that the mass is hyper intense compared to the normal left cerebellar hemisphere. Several fluid filled cysts within the mass uh, suppress completely. 
coronal tattoo weighted right is the coronal tattoo weighted mri and it shows that the mass has a striped or tigroid pattern the cerebellar folia are expanded compared to the normal left cerebellum left is the t1 contrast enhanced mri in the same patient and it shows no enhancement of the mass but punctate and linear enhancing foci representing prominent vessels are noted right is the coronal t1 contrast enhanced fat suppressed mri and it shows that the it shows that the enhancing vessels uh, it shows the enhancing vessels but no enhancement of the mass itself the preoperative diagnosis was cerebellar neoplasm this is a biopsy proven case of dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma further evaluation revealed cordon disease and the need for active cancer surveillance was identified so starting with the neurocutaneous melanosis cases left is a graphic and it shows the localized dark melano melanotic pigmentation of the leptomeninges inset demonstrates the extension of the melanosis into the brain substance along the virco robin spaces right is the axial t1 weighted mri of a 6 year old child with benign parenchymal and leptomeningeal melanosis and it is showing multiple foci of t1 shortening that is hyper intense signals in the amygdala and it indicates the parenchymal involvement and in the right ambient cistern and this is indicating the leptomeningeal disease left is the axial t2 weighted mri in the same patient and it reveals the t2 shortening that is hyper intense signal of the mass lesions in the amygdala and the ambient cistern note the abnormal signals are more difficult to see on the t2 weighted images right is the axial t1 contrast enhanced mri in the same patient and is demonstrating the enhancement of the leptomeningeal lesion the parenchymal lesions uh, do not enhance and are actually slightly less conspicuous as is often the case following contrast injection left is the axial t1 weighted mri of a 4 year old child with neurocutaneous melanosis and it is revealing two small deposits of t1 hyper intensities that is t1 hyper intense uh, melanin on the surface of the right cerebellar hemisphere the right image is the axial t1 weighted mri and it shows the foci of intrinsic high signal intensity in the two regions of the cerebral cortex representing the cortical melanosis in the setting of neurocutaneous melanosis these lesions are stable over the short term and they do not appreciably change after the administration of paramagnetic contrast left is the axial t1 contrast enhanced mri and it shows the diffuse neurocutaneous melanosis in a 6 year old child the pile melanosis involves virtually the entire surface of the brain and it is uh, enhancing strongly and uniformly moderate to severe lateral ventricular megaly is also noted on the right side uh, image that's a sagittal t1 contrast uh, t1 weighted mri in the same patient and it reveals the patent aqueduct of sylvius and enlarged basilar cisterns thus the hydrocephalus is of the extraventricular obstructive type diffusely abnormal leptomeningeal enhancement is also noted left is the axial t1 weighted mri and it shows significant mass effect in the right posterior temporal and occipital lobes with effacement of the surface sulci the uncus is herniated only minimal hyperintensity is evident surgery disclosed extensive melanosis that had invaded the brain via the perivascular spaces right is the axial t1 weighted contrast enhanced mri in the same patient and it shows a strongly enhancing superficial mass that fills the adjacent sulci and extends deeply into the underlying brain parenchyma